it is I, Obi, or the Bane. Yes, I said I log on things ironically because I'm aggressively posh. Don't at me. Stop it. I can see you right in the tailwind section. Fuck off. I know. Shh. Hush. Anyway, big thanks to Gray for having me on his channel yeah. and editing the video because I have no clue how to edit. I just read things for a living. Come on, leave me alone. It's not my fault. Uh, but yeah, cheers for editing and cheers for having me on your channel, Gray. And enjoy the video. Good lord, Khaled thought, strutting forth into his beautiful kitchen. I sure do love my Christian family! Before him sat his milk-loving family, each with an upper lip of pure ebony joy. A bountiful feast was set upon the table, can upon can of immaculately stacked milk, so tall it made God squeal in envy, breaking his own rules, just the way Gallad liked it. A plate of butter sat in the middle of the table, gold bars and a sea of ivory. His lovely wife of 20 years did all this every morning, 4 o'clock sharp every morning, for his lovely Christian family. Gallard couldn't get enough of it. It was the orgasm following midnight sleep songs. A sensual experience for the whole family. Okay, what the fuck am I reading? Hello? Hello? Noni? His darling daughter, Kelia, sat next to her brother, spoon feeding him milk straight from the can. What is this obsession with milk? She was a pretty one having inherited all the good genes from Gallard, leaving behind recessive Slavic genes from her mother. Her luscious green locks fell around her waist, and he could see the beginning of her chest fin, an essential piece of equipment for attracting males. Her submissive eyes drove him wild in the night. He longed to caress them. Okay, bearing in mind this is about Pokemon, by the way. They are Pokemon. And that goes for all of the people who are going to listen to this. this these are Pokemon. <laughs> if it were up to Gallard, he would keep her as his forever, but God didn't want it that way. If he did, God wouldn't allow women to have heat cycles, as they stole from the wicked survivor in the garden. Heat cycles were devious things indeed, giving women the sexual desires they need to procreate. They also distracted hard-working men like Gallard while he worked. It's hard to work with a poke erection after all. Ah, oh, my eyes! What am I reading? <laughs> Rolt drank the spoon milk like a champion, doing a better job than Gallard when he was just a Rolts. Why? The boy was a better Rolts than he was by a wide margin. Something Galad held against the child. The stupid kid thought he was a better Galad. A five-year-old. What does the world come to when young people start thinking they are better than the old people? Yet Galad could not help but feel a shred of pride as his son swallowed the milk, nearly sucking Kelia's arm into his stomach while doing so. Okay, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> That's a good job you're doing there, son," he said. Yes, yes, I can, I can, I can see very, very much dad daughter vibes of this. Uh. Rouse turned towards his father. A smile emerged. Then a torrent of milk, the majority of which covered Curlia. Rouse cooed at his father. Gallad responded with an iconic hero smile. Curlia stared at the boy, mouth ajar. Contempt spread like wildfire across her face. She raised her free hand as if to strike him, psychic energy bubbling around her. Sensing the powerful love the two were sharing, Gallant let loose a throaty laugh. I'm not gonna lie, wanting to like throw psychic energy and strike him is not very loving. I'm gonna give I'm gonna be real, you chief. He saw his wife stiffen out the corner of his eye. Awestruck, no doubt. Kelia's expression softened. She lowered her fist and the energy around her dissipated. Such a powerful bond is shared by those two, Gallard thought. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, fuck. we got it. We got a f***ing, uh, we got a f***ing stuttering Sundere goddamn character. G Good morning, father. Kilia said, milk dripping from her ivory body, but she paid it no mind. <laughs> Perhaps she put on a brave face for her father, who she knew was far more attractive. What? Noni? <laughs> Kelia brought the spoon from Rod's mouth back to the can of milk. She soaked it, allowing the succulent liquid to both absorb into the spoon and collect within its basin. Gallard felt his stomach grumble. A night of hip smashing typically made him famish in the morning, but he could not sit yet. He had to make sure his daughter did her womanly duties correctly. He watched her as she brought the spoon back to Rod's lips. Were she to spill even a single drop of the luscious liquid, punishment would ensue. One so severe, the young woman would never be able to function as a person again. For a waste of milk is like a waste of a life. 
Every breakfast has required this check after the incident, and he was content to keep it that way. As the milk split Route's plump, juicy lips, Gallad nodded his approval. She had not failed her duty this day. Good girl, Gallad said. Perhaps I'll give you a sugar-free candy later. You are doing a good job feeding Rolts after all. Curlier grimaced. Females need sugar-free candy so that they didn't get fat. That was a sure way to keep his daughter attractive for potential male suitors. Unlike men, sugar wasn't a potent poison that affected the female uterus. It forced the organ to release chemicals to turn the womanly physique every male desired into something of a whale lord. He had seen it firsthand in the war. This, this feels like it's written by an incel. I'm gonna be real. It feels like it's written by an incel. He like hates women. And it's like women should be... Uh. Gallad puffed his chest out. Proud of his, her ability to properly care for the other male of the house. It gave him hope. Hope that this otherwise degenerate and sex crazed generation could navigate the choppy seas and make his SJW plagued world. Because there was no way Gilad would field roles, nor could he guide the wayward souls of the new generation. No, sir. As the sole provider of the family, Gallad believed his purpose was being fulfilled. Kirlia was as learning how to take care of a child she would have to do one day, and Ralts was learning to be pampered, as he would also have to do one day. It was a win-win situation for the whole family. Okay, I'm sorry about the shitty intonation here, but I don't know what I'm reading. This is interesting, to say the least. I'm a little confused. I'm always confused when I'm reading this shit, dude. Besides that, Gallant believed fellow males had to fight their own battles. Modeled through life with the same stoic expression Sergeant Pikachu wore on Omaha Beach as he watched his friends get slaughtered by Alolan Icicle Spears. I'm sorry, <laughs> Sergeant Pikachu on a Omaha Beach? <laughs> what the fuck am I reading? He refused to help them on principle, and Gallant stuck by his sergeant's belief even after the war. The mere thought of man reaching out to others for help made Galad sick to his stomach. He turned to Gardevoir, the aging female he claimed as his own, and co-creator of his children. She sat painfully straight, eyes ringed with crow's feet and eye bags. He would have to talk to her about that later. The audacity she possessed to not make herself up astounded Galad. Perhaps she didn't learn her lesson the last time. What is this incel shit I'm reading? Who wrote this? Does he hate women or think women should be man? Uh Gardevoir held a buttered knife in her right hand, milk in her left. She buttered her milk with the precision of a machine, a skill left over from a job she used to have before Galad saved her. It was an awe-inspiring sight, one that made his knees weak. It was as though Galad was a schoolgirl receiving God's blessing behind the ceremonial curtain after services had concluded. Of course, he never thought of himself as a schoolgirl. Well, that would be sacrilegious. Those with ideas of being the other sex were delusional. Something he definitely was like. Okay, it's an incel. We all know this is a fucking incel. A creeping yet familiar dampness in his crotch spoiled his spotless underwear. The female he married sat before him, buttering milk. The perfect, beautiful female that he rescued from the snake-like grip of feminine empowerment. She reminded him every day of his heroic action with missionary sex and buttered milk. A just reward for such a holy deal. Okay, let's just repeat that. From the snake-like grip of feminine empowerment. Wee woo, wee woo, incel alert. Wee woo, wee woo. Good morning, sweetie, Gardevoir said. She began to rise from her seat with the intention of giving him a kiss, just as she did every morning, just the way he liked it. Aha! No need to rise for me, noble wife, Gallad said, stopping her, for I shall lean over the table to deliver my affection. Gallad leaned over this table, his broad and manly chest fin, which was one of the largest in the region, essentially slid into the butter with a schlump. He sloppily kissed his big wife, his tongue scraped the inside of her mouth, collecting the bits of butter and milk she had not swallowed. <sighs> uh, thank you for that image. Thank you, very cool. Thank you so much. Oh, content that he had amassed all she missed, he raised his head to the ceiling and swallowed, allowing his wife to watch his Abra's apple slither down his throat. He could tell this got her hot and bothered. It was easy to tell when a female was aroused by the look in her eye. 
Gardevoir's eyes indicated confusion, the sexiest emotion. Without hesitation, he slid his tongue between her lips once more. He couldn't help but savour the flavour of her delicate mouth. He felt like a pervert doing this in front of his children, but her saliva appealed to him in ways nothing else did, especially after she had given birth. Yeah, I forgot about the children. What this is just- Oh god, why is he doing it for the children? <laughs> Perhaps his righteous baby batter had an effect on the taste of her mouth. Only God would know. Yet he refused to answer Calamity Twist of Pet. Baby batter. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't understand. Whose thought process? Who thought? Oh, baby batter. He yearned to taste her post-birth saliva once more. Galad hoped to impregnate her again soon. Her heat cycle was coming up. He hoped he did not get sent on a work trip as he did during her last cycle. Luckily, he managed to squirt off one child before he left. Ralph's birth followed the last cycle, and Gallad could not have been happier. He pulled away from her after two full minutes of tongue sucking and mouth scraping. Thick strands of spittle hanged from his chin. It's hung! Hung from his chin! Come on! Was it as good for you as it was for me, he asked, and slurped the little spittle like spaghetti noodles. Mmm, she replied. Her eyes lingered on the soiled butter. Face contorted in distress! Of course it was, Khaled declared. He took the empty seat at the head of the table and grabbed a can of milk. He bit down, chewing ravenously. It had been hours since he had last eaten, and his midnight session with Gardevoir left him famished, unacceptable with a prominent member of the house. If only his wife could feed him while he slept, he would be invincible then. Mum, are you okay? Kelia suddenly asked. She was clearly worried about her mother. Gallad never understood how women could betray their emotions to others, like Curlia was doing. No wonder men were superior. Okay. Gardev was stared at the spoiled butter, unblinking. She stood witness to a horrid cry, something so incomprehensible, so senseless, that she slipped into shock, unable to comprehend the barbarity of the misdeed. Like pooping on a Bible, Gallad thought. Mom? Curlia got out of her seat and left her darling brother unattended. She walked over to Gardevoir and shook her. Her mother gave neither reply or reaction to Curly's attempts to undo the older female stupor. Gallad watched as Rolts teared up and grasped the spoon Curly had placed on the table. Unable to grab it, his arms were too short and the high chair too restricted. Something sinister bubbled inside of Gallad as Rolts sat unattended and undeferred. The boy managed to reach the spoon but struggled to bring the spoon to his mouth and spilled milk on the table. None of the moist liquid reached the boy's lip. Rage, pure and unfiltered, swirled within Galad. Holy milk had been spilt this day, and the perpetrator stood by the person who needs it least. Helia, I beseech you to sit and feed your brother this instant. Your mother is simply tired from last night. She didn't get much sleep, you see, Galad said, malice dripped from his words. Were it not for his faith in the one true god, he would have activated his megaphone and gone beast mode on the insolent b Kelia looked from Gardevoir to him and back again. She was clearly still worried. She stood by her mother and shook her once again to no avail. Father, please. Mum clearly isn't well. Perhaps we should- Kelia? Gallant shouted. Lest you wish for the punishment again. I suggest you sit beside your devilishly handsome brother and continue to feed him. Because of your neglect, milk has been spilt. Kelia's eyes widened. Fifth, she knew well the consequences. Despite this, she glanced to her mother once more, worry still apparent. She finally left her mother and sat down. Kelia grimaced, but picked up the spoon and began feeding Rolski. Her hands steady. Ralts sucked the milk down like a feral mighty eater on its last legs. Galad's rage subsided. Being a parent required a harsh disposition. Few had the nerve to conjure. Galad wished his wife would manage the same temperament, so successfully disciplined Kelia when she was wrong. It was just another flaw Galad found in his woman. He finished his balanced breakfast in near silence, lips smacking delightfully. His wife uttered a nary sound for the remainder of the morning meal, as any woman should. If only all females were as submissive and quiet as she, Gallad thought. <sighs> I think the incel levels are too high at this point. She didn't even move. A brief moment of panic flashed through him. But what would he do if the bearer and caretaker of his child was to depart and meet God before him? 
While she was flawed, she was the only one who could watch his children while he provided for the family. The only one able enough to teach Rolts the way of the Lord from her. Would he acquire another wench to look after his children? Marry the female his father originally wanted him to have? Marry his daughter? No, he could never marry his daughter. She had already enraged Galad, neglecting to pay her full and undivided attention to his succulent son. She would be a terrible mother, even if it were Galad's child she cared for. Even if it were his child she carried in a prime uterus. Of course, that sort of thing was to be avoided if at all possible. Just as Sergeant Pikachu said, but the option was there. He would have to speak with his wife and her daughter as her failure as a woman soon, before she fell victim to lesbianism and teenage boys. An outcome most undesirable for Galad and his family. Galad slammed a fist onto the table, startling Gardevoir, putting his contingency crisis to rest. He issued the test to make sure his voice functioned properly. He slid an empty can of milk in her direction. She glanced at it, then him. He raised his eyebrows seductively. She blinked slowly, one eyelid closing at a time. Gods will be damned, he thought. I'm gonna push this woman onto the table and sex her brains out. Never had a woman been more attracted to him, and he to a woman. Galad could tell by her vapid stare and engorged breasts. She was wetter than a priest in a car full of skullgirls. And he was ready to take her now. As he pushed his chair back to stand, she took the can in both hands, stood up and walked to the sink. She placed the can gently within, calmly walked back to the table and sat back down. Her eyes still clung to the soiled butter, but much of the distress she displayed earlier had disappeared. A serving of cream by would help to eliminate such feelings for butter, Galad thought. Regrettably, it would have to be far later in the day. He was a working man after all. Galad checked the clock and thought about utilising his manly muscles to provide for the wholesome family he created. They were big muscles too, thick and creamy like a well-cooked meal. It was 8.30. It was about time he had to leave for work, as he had done every morning for the past 20 years. Galad stood and gave his son bro a hug. Gave his son bro hug. Galad stood and gave his son bro hug. No commas, just son bro hug. There was nothing fatherly nor gay about it, just as he intended. He kissed his daughter on the lips. He even slipped in a bit of tongue to remind her that she was his daughter. The daughter he loved very much. Not the one that tried to call the police on him. Oh how Kelia loved to feel his raspy tongue split her lips like Moses did the Red Sea. She pushed him away and sputtered at the ground. She glanced up at him, lips quivering. She looked at him, her dear old dad. The one she trusted most in the world. The person who would love and protect her until the end of time. And he kissed her, stole her virginity. It was all for him, the patriarch of the family, the true alpha male, the leader of the pack, Vroom Vroom. That is in brackets, by the way. Leader of the pack, Vroom Vroom. She would never be able to get it back from him either, for he locked it deep within himself, a place she would never be able to get to, even if she shrunk down and entered his body. Oh, the joys and advantages of the male body. Okay. First of all, stealing her virginity, call the police. Incel, what the f***? Jesus Christ. Secondly, well, why would you add the true alpha male, the leader of the pack, Vroom Vroom, in brackets? Vroom Vroom, I'm a car. Hello? Is this loss? Yeah, is this, is this Lightning McQueen? Have I been, is this a game theory? Pokemon are actually cars? He gave his wife an appropriate peck on the cheek. She knew what it meant. Later, he would have to take her to the sacred bed and commit a heinous yet glorious sin in the name of God. Farewell, my doting and loving family. I am off to make what the kids call cheddar, so we can continue to live faithfully in the light of our good god Arceus. Only Ralts waved him goodbye. The other two sat silently and exchanged a look, indecipherable to the macho Galad. He would ask after it later. He walked to the front door and donned his trademark fedora. <laughs> oh my god! R slash nice guy, white knight, incel, it's all of them. He needed this to keep him warm and to hide his sinful thoughts from God. It was shameful that men walked this world without caps. Everyone knew what men were most sinful of the two genders, when it concerned the mind anyway. Women were no doubt the sluttiest of the two. As he stepped out the door and unlocked his 2009 Toyota Prius, which had been peppered with gunshots after he drove through a crowd of pro-choice protesters, he felt something deep in his bones. Today was going to be one heck of a glorious day. Okay, let's go off the main points of this. He's an incel. He's a he's a fucking SJW woman hater. He's a fanatic religious person, and he's against. He's he's not pro-choice. He ran down pro-choice people 
in a protest. And he f***ing raped his daughter, it seems. What the fuck? Hello? Why am I rec- what, what have I recorded?